chair recognizes the gentleman from Michigan, Mr. Dingell. Mr. Chairman, I thank you. Um, question to Mr. Zipperstein. Mr. Zipperstein, I am lucky enough to have an Apple iPhone. Um, now, if it's possible that I'm not happy with my AT&T service and I want to change carriers, um, assuming for the moment that the iPhone is a dual band, is there any reason why I shouldn't be able to take my phone with me to another carrier? The only reason at this point is the exclusive contract that AT&T has with, I, with Apple. That's the only reason? That I'm aware of, yes, Mr. Chairman. There's no technical reason? Well, I think you said, assuming that it's a dual band, GSM and CDMA, so our network is a CDMA network. If the phone is technically capable of working on a CDMA network and it meets the performance standards of the network, if it meets the requirements of the FCC in other respects, then there, isn't, there would not be a technical reason why it could not work. So FCC, through their rulemaking and the chip makers through their magic, are able to address all of the questions that might exist here. Is that right? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Now, this is my old friend, Mr. Revere, and welcome to the committee. Um, I have heard your argument that the wireless network of today is very different from the AT&T telephone network of 68, and I agree with you. Um, in fact, you and I are probably the only ones around who would remember that. But um, today, four wireless carriers cover 90% of the market. And it's pretty hard for me to ignore the reports and, and the testimony of Mr. Devitt that people who make wireless devices and software are not able to get new services to consumers as quickly as they would like at all. Quite frankly, this brings back my memories of the Carter and Carter phone. Now, is there a reason why wireless carriers uh, should um, be constricted in determining what advices, devices consumers can use on the network and what applications they can use on their phones. And in like fashion, is there any reason why um, if the, the original grant of the wavelength and the technical questions that can be addressed, that the consumers ought not have the ability to determine what devices they're going to use on the network? Well, Mr. Chairman, uh, assuming that the technical issues can be overcome, and some of them have to do with intricacies involving shared networks, that is, that the airwaves are shared between among all the, all the consumers that, that use them, things of that nature, but assuming they can be overcome, there's no particular reason why one shouldn't, um, if, if this seems to be uh, the preferred course, um, introduce obligations for the use of any device one wants, any application one wants. The, the question that I have about this is whether or not we aren't better off relying on the competitive process to try to produce what consumers want. The, the carriers, it seems... Well, let, let's, let's address the competitive process. The purpose here is to provide service to the consumers. The purpose here is to provide the maximum choice to the consumers. The purpose here is to provide competition so that the consumers are best served. The purpose here is to see to it that, the, that this provides the greatest choice and the greatest availability of service of all kinds to the consumer. It, once we agree on all of those points, why is it that, that we should not allow this particular choice to the consumer and why is it that that, 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 that right to choose by the consumer should be constrained? I think, Mr. Chairman, I, I, there are two things that enter into this that are important at least to consider carefully. One is whether or not the existing carriers have any set of incentives not to try to provide what people want. If, if, if one assumes, as I do, that in order to maintain their businesses, they're very anxious to serve consumers to provide what they want, we can, we can I think, rely on their wholesome incentives. A second aspect of this, however, is this. If we, if we change these particular requirements, these particular rules, there will be consequences. I suspect the consequences will be that there will be changes in at least a couple of obvious dimensions. One, the pricing for transmission will change. The, 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 the various approaches to pricing... Let, 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 let me interrupt you, old friend. Um, first of all, the Carter phone said that they could use it on a wire network. If it did not cause 
problems. Um, in, in, in the drafting of the original license or the grant of the wavelength, that can, that can be in large part addressed. The balance of the problems can be in large part addressed by the software makers and the people who make, make the network work. Now, why then is there a problem on this that, that ought not be decided in favor of the consumer as opposed to being decided in favor of somebody else? I, see, I think the question on some level is, are we sure, are we confident? Well, that this here's, is here's the deal. First, you insist that the grant address that question in that fashion. That gets rid of a lot of the problems, does it not? It, yes or no? It gets rid of a lot of problems or it doesn't? I think and then the software maker comes along and the hardware maker comes along, the software and the chip address the balance of the question. And if it can't be addressed, then don't let them do it. But if it can be addressed, why should we deny them? Now, obviously, the, the, the network owner, the licensee is going to say, oh, this is scandalous that we should be doing this for the consumer. Uh, but as a consumer, and I think you and I share that concern, we think that maybe the consumer ought to be looked after and that the, and that the network owner and the licensee is going to do just fine because he's going to charge whatever it costs to provide the service or he's going to be in business. It, it is, it, you're, Mr. Chairman, you're absolutely right. The network operator will adjust to whatever the rules are, but there are at least a couple of things to think about. One is whether or not the, the preference of the majority of consumers may continue to reside in this subsidized handset model. The reason it arose, I presume, is because the carriers thought that this would get more people on the network. The second is the, the pricing rubrics. The, the way that we presently price wireless service will surely change if any application is uh, available That's, at the behest. That is, that that is of course, true. And they're, going to, and they're going to price it at the level which, which enables them to continue in business and continue making money. But we've already addressed the problem. They, they, technically, they can address it. And quite honestly, um, there's no reason to say, all right, we're just going to blanket say you can't do it. The, in, in, in the Carter phone case, what they do is they see to it that the telephone fits on the system. When I look at the bottom of my telephone, I'm, I apologize, I'm over, I know I'm over time, Mr. Chairman. But when I look at the bottom of my telephone, it says this has, that this is by rule and regulation the FCC determined to be suitable and, and, and for the use on, on the particular net. Now, is there any reason why we couldn't have the same thing with regard to the wireless phone? I see none. Do you? No, you, you clearly can. There's, there's, I think there's no doubt about that. I think the, the, the question that is uncertain, and I, don't, I really don't believe that there's any way for us to know the answer. Is but the answer not, is that you set it up beforehand. The, the, the grant of the, of the license permits them to function on the basis of having all this be compatible. Software and the hardware makers, they do what they've got to do, and all of a sudden you've, you've, you've solved the problem, and there's no reason to have a ban on this kind of arrangement, and there's no reason why we ought not look after the consumer, who's the guy for whom we're setting this damn thing up in the first place, and who's going to be paying the cost. I, I, I agree that I don't, at least I'm not aware of any technical inhibitions. Right. The thing that is uncertain. Well, is I, I'm, I'm three minutes and 46 seconds past my time. I've, it's good to see you again. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, gentlemen, this time has expired. The chair